All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're looking at uh, part one of evolution. Uh, we've already looked at it a little bit in class, but really what we're trying to do here is talk about the mechanisms that create evolution. So first of all, just a little uh, picture of what's happening here. You know, people think that we came from monkeys. That's not true. We actually uh, diverged from a common ancestor and then kept branching off and mutating until we finally are the organisms that we are today. So what to know. This is what we're going to want to know by the end of the video. Let me just get a different pen color because I hear that the red looks really bad. We'll just do black. It could be even worse. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so first of all, we're going to talk about the theory of evolution. What is it? And then we're going to talk about the different uh, agents of evolutionary change. So pretty much what actually causes uh, evolution, evolution to occur. So mutations, genetic drift, gene flow, non-random mating, and natural selection. So I'm going to talk about the definitions of each one first, and then we're going to talk about uh, a little more detail and then go over some activities to help us concrete some understanding uh, next class. <clears throat> so first of all, here are the three points about the theory of evolution. Okay, So number one is that life on Earth has changed over time. That's a theory. right? We theorize based on the facts that life on Earth has not changed constant. It happened or has not stayed constant. It changes over time. Number two is that there's been descent, so when your parents give birth to offspring, that the offspring is modified. And they do this by passing on genes, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, from parents, and it has changes. So those are keys, right? So it changes as it goes on from one generation to the next. And the last one is that modern organisms have descended from ant uh, ancient organisms. So that's like we we're talking about where we have a similar ancestor and we keep branching off as we go along creating these other different organisms. Okay, so write those three down. You might need to pause it now. So genes and evolution. So chrome oh so first of all I'm jumping ahead there a little bit. We just need a little bit of background information. We have these things called chromosomes. It's the structure that's wound into these little X shapes. And that's what all the DNA is coiled into. And on the DNA we have specific regions on these chromosomes uh, which are called genes. And what those genes are is it's a specific region of DNA that carries the information to produce a specific protein. So it's the DNA spot that will get changed into the RNA which will end up arranging the amino acids in a specific order in order to make our proteins. For example, eye color. So you might have a gene with a certain type of eye color. The next thing is that we have specific genes, and since we are diploid organisms, which means we have two sets of chromosomes, it means that we have different possible variations of those same genes. So for example, with that eye color, you may have blue eyes, green eyes, brown eyes, or if you're an albino, which means no pigment, red eyes. So you can see this albino, albino squirrel has red eyes, whereas this cat has, I don't know, greenish yellow. Okay, so you can have the same gene, but it can be telling you that you can be having different colors. Okay, so mutations. This is number one. This is the first uh, agent of evolution. And what it does is it changes DNA. We've seen this already when we're talking about our protein synthesis. When we see these changes in DNA, it's going to affect what's going to be created in our RNA. And then that affects what proteins are made. And the proteins is what impacts uh, all the functions in our body. Like I said, it affects the proteins that are produced. For example, if we have a mutation in the hair color DNA or in the hair color gene, this can change it from this. And, and there's not supposed to be a pun about hair and hair, like this is a bunny hair. So this is a brown one if there's a mutation, and it can turn it into this. So there's a big difference in terms of its evolution and what the organism is going to look like and how it behaves based on these proteins that have been mutated. Okay, so pause it now to write that down. You might want to include the example too, right? Brown hair versus white hair and spell it the right way. Hair is spelled this, but the stuff that's on their body is spelled like that. English teacher. Okay, next one, genetic drift. 
Uh, genetic drift is uh, is a, the next few are kind of tricky. So we're going to do some real life examples in the classroom. But what this is is a, just a change of frequency of allele, which means like the type of gene, so you know eye color, hair color, in a population due to random sampling. Okay, so let's look at the visual. It should help it the best. Wait for it to reload. So just look at this one first. So what we have is 20 different marbles, 10 red, 10 blue. And what happens is they start taking certain ones and taking it out random. And then whatever you put in the next one, you might end up picking out 20 blue ones, or you might pick out 16 and 4. But what you're going to see is as you go from one jar to the next and keeping on picking them, the amount won't stay 50-50. So the evolution or the popularity of a certain trait, so maybe it's hair color, or in that case it's blue marbles, can change based on um, what area you're looking at. So we'll see this one in more detail uh, next class. Uh, next one, gene flow. So this is number three. What this is, it's the transfer of the alleles or genes from one population to the next. And visual is the best way to look at this. So uh, it's a little bit dark in the background. So as you can see, we have this enormous mountain. So we have two uh, pretty much segregated populations of birds and they have different genotypes which you don't have to really know just know that they're different types but when one goes over and mates with the other it's going to affect the genes of the other organisms this isn't due to mutations this is just strictly due to breeding of one organism into a different area and so since you have this new organism uh, it will continue to repopulate with this new trait so let's say if you look at this one Normally there were no blue ones, but when you went and mated, now you have a blue one in its population, and it might carry on that, that similar uh, trait in future generations. Non-random mating, we know what random means, just at random or with no specific purpose, uh, organisms can mate. Most of the time they have specific reasons why they mate, for example, in the video we saw last day on TED Talks, it mentioned how uh, it was taught, called the sexy nerd. And they're believing that more and more people with like minds, like intelligences, like similarities tend to get together. So if they're really, really smart, they're going to have really, really smart kids. That's the theory. So it occurs when the probability that two individuals in a population, which means a certain area, uh, will mate is not the same for all possible pairs. So it doesn't have just as likely likelihood to mate with one organism as another. And this happens in the human populations. People pick mates based on certain things, which could be intelligence or money or physique. In the animal kingdom, <clears throat> and I'll get to that in a second, we have the American robin that tends to indi or, and tends to mate based on how dark the plumage is of the feathers. The darker tends to indicate better reproductive ability. Okay. So it's an organism is more likely to mate with another within their community. So this is non-random mating. Okay, So it's not random, it's totally spe specific based on certain characteristics. Next one, natural selection. This is the big one. This is one we're going to talk about quite a bit. This means that nature is going to select for organisms that are best suited to its environment. Or another way to say this, it's a gradual change where traits or certain alleles become more or less common based on the fitness of the organism. So it doesn't mean how far the organism uh, runs. It means how well suited it is to its environment. Okay, So we like to call this mechanism the survival of the fittest. Whatever organism has the most favorable uh, adaptation is going to survive and because it survives, it's going to be able to rep reproduce. So here's a little example. We have this thing called the pepper moth. It likes to hang out on birch trees. Excellent camouflage. If you have this type of camouflage, you're not going to be seen. But there's also an organism that has the same uh, uh, same species, but it just has a different layer. So depending on which area it's living in, and we'll talk about this in more detail later, uh, there will be a certain one that's going to be preferred. So in this situation, this one's going to be preferred. In this situation, this guy is. And if a white one comes along, it's going to be eaten. This one in this situ situ excuse me, scenario is better suited to its environment. So the one that's better suited will live. The other one, sadness, dies. So here's a little cartoon just to talk about the natural selection 
process. Not that funny. Just thought I'd include it. And then just to finish off, adaptation. What is it? It's any genetically controlled characteristic, so inherited genes, that increases its fitness or its ability to survive and reproduce. So this cartoon I love because it's totally uh, due to those environmental characteristics. It's not how hard the organism is trying or wanting to change. It doesn't matter how much it wants to change into a chainsaw. It's not going to happen unless some environmental pressures uh, makes that happen. Okay, so if there's any questions, uh, feel free to bring in uh, questions next day and we'll go over it. But we're going to go into all of these in a lot more detail next day. Just have these notes ready for us.